In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the precious metals, but we're also gonna be taking a look at the quote, it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep, and evaluating what the 1% does that the 99% does not. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and staying safe. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about silver and also gold, along with a variety of other assets, because I wanted to talk about how these assets can help you save money. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there. Go check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you want to get some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. But today is Friday, June 4th, 2021. It is currently about 75 degrees outside. It's incredibly humid. Gray skies. It's about to rain. And it's actually... June 3rd as I'm filming the video, just this video is going to be coming out on the 4th. So being that I'm filming the video on Thursday rather than Friday, I don't know what the spot price is going to be, but as I'm recording the video, silver is $27.09, which means it's down over a dollar, and gold is $1,865.50, which means it's down over 40. The gold to silver ratio is in the 67 to 68 to 1 range. Head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. But today, even though I wanted to talk about silver and gold, I'm going to kind of push that into the second half of the video because there's something I wanted to go over first. There's been a quote that I've been hearing for years and years and years. It's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you keep. Now, I don't know about you, I can't speak for anyone but myself, but I am just an average Joe, just a normal person, working class. I don't come from wealth. I wasn't handed anything. In fact, you could actually say quite the opposite happened several times during my life. Point being is that I don't come from a family, I don't come from anything where it's been rolling around in money or fee up my whole life. That's not the way it was. And a lot of what I know today, I had to figure out on my own. And I wasn't taught by family members or relatives. So when I started hearing the quote, it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. My first and automatic interpretation was that you should spend as little as possible. You should hang on to and keep as much cash as you possibly could. That was how I viewed it when my financial IQ was pretty much bare minimum with the rest of the 99%. I didn't have that 1% financial IQ. And I still don't, by the way. I'm still working on my financial literacy. But that's how I originally saw it. I thought it was, okay, I don't make very much, but I'll spend as close to nothing as possible. Am I rich yet? Absolutely not, it doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, you cannot save your way to wealth. Then as time went by, months and a couple of years passed, and I revisited the quote, it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. I started to actually take a look at what the 1% was actually doing. I decided that if you want what the 1% has, you probably shouldn't be doing what the 99% do. You should probably be doing what the 99% refuse to do. And by the way, I've never been a fan of the us versus them mentality, whether it be in money, the poor hating the rich, the rich hating the poor, whether it be in politics, left versus right, right versus left, that has always struck me as very feeble-minded, so I don't like to subscribe to that type of thinking, but I think it's important if we're going to be talking about the 1% versus the 99%, I think I should explain it in a way to hopefully paint a picture to really help you understand what I'm trying to do with this video. So picture 
100 of us standing in a room. In addition to 100 of us, there's also $100. 99 of those dollars belongs to only one of us, and that $1 that's left over, the 99 of us have to fight over. That's pretty much the structure, and it's also important to acknowledge that from afar or from an outsider's perspective, that might not seem fair, and I would agree. From the outside looking in, it probably wouldn't appear to be fair, but the 1% did something or is currently doing something that the 99% did not or will not do. So I started paying attention to what some of the big dogs, the top dogs were doing, and I came to the realization that it's not about saving and hoarding cash, it's actually more so about spending cash because a lot of people like to give businesses and companies a hard time for paying as little in taxes as possible. Now that is part of it, but that's actually not what the quote is about. I'm getting there. Keep in mind, this was a couple of years in the making, developing a better and better understanding of what this quote is really truly about. But I was looking at these businesses and these companies and I saw that a lot of people give them a hard time for paying close to nothing in taxes. When in all actuality, what they're really doing is almost like paying taxes in a different way because they're not hoarding the cash. It's not like they're sitting on a big pile of currency or anything like that. That's not what it's about. What they're actually doing is investing back into their business, back into their company. What else are they doing? They're paying their employees. What else are they doing? They're expanding. They're structuring. What else are they doing? They're outsourcing. What else are they doing? They're paying other people, other businesses, other companies for their products and services to help build theirs. So coming around full circle, what are they actually doing instead of writing a check to Uncle Sam? They're taking all of that cash that Uncle Sam wants and they are injecting it into the economy. They're putting it into the pockets of their workers. They're putting it into the pockets of other businesses and they're letting this cash flow throughout the economy. It's almost like paying taxes in a different way instead of letting Uncle Sam decide where the dollar bills go. The companies, the businesses, the one percenters, they decide where the cash goes. Moving forward, as time went by, I realized even that right there isn't exactly what the quote is really truly about. I then came to find out, in addition to not burning through cash, in addition to reinvesting in yourself and your business and your employees, it's also about storing value. It's about taking those dollar bills, which unfortunately, let's be honest, are crumbling and diminishing and depreciating in value every second of the day because they just keep printing more and more and more and more and more. You could make hundreds of millions of dollars a year and still not come out on top because there's nothing you can do to match or surpass the number of dollar bills that they're printing on a daily basis. It's just not attainable. So what can you do to combat the issue? You can take the dollar bills, which are depreciating in value, and you can put them into assets that will either store value or appreciate in value. There's a lot of different things you can do. There's a lot of different ways you can go. There's a lot of different routes you can take. So if you take a step back and evaluate what some of the top one percenters are actually doing, you'll quickly find out that one thing that they do is put some cash into certain stocks or index funds as a way of storing value with, of course, plenty of potential for growth. What's something else that they do? They'll buy land, they'll buy real estate, another excellent store of value and likely to greatly appreciate in value as time goes by? What's something else that they do? They buy businesses, they start businesses, they build their businesses up and turn them into massive companies. 
What's something else that they do? They take their dollar bills, they take their fiat, they take their currency, and just a mere transaction, they swap it for legitimate money, real true honest money. Biblically recognizes money, internationally recognizes money, constitutionally recognizes money. Silver and gold, often viewed as a store of value. So what do the top 1% of the top 1% do? I can't say for certain, but I would just go ahead and assume they probably do a little bit of all of that. They probably put a little bit of their cash in stocks and index funds. They probably put a little bit of their cash into rental properties or plots of land and lease it out for farming purposes. They probably start businesses, purchase businesses, have their own companies. They probably have quite a bit of gold, probably a little bit of silver as well. But I would assume people in the top 1% or the top 1% of the 1% probably put far more cash into gold than silver. But regardless, I would assume that they probably have a little bit in precious metals as well. A very diversified portfolio. They don't spread themselves too thin. I know for a fact that a lot of them prefer to remain illiquid some of which prefer to have accessible liquidity. I mean, silver and gold, you could very easily take that on over to a coin shop, part ways with it for some dollar bills. You could put it up on eBay. You can advertise it on social media. You could do whatever you want to convert it back into dollars. Regardless, that's the conclusion that I came to. Friendly reminder, I'm not a financial advisor, so nothing on this channel has ever been financial advice. Do your own research, form your own opinions, make your own decisions based off your conclusions, not mine. But the conclusion that I came to was that I personally believe that's what the quote is all about. It's not how much you make, it's about how much you keep. How much of your income are you holding on to so that you can put it into an asset that can do a variety of different things. Maybe it produces a little bit of cash flow. Maybe it's just simply a store of value. Maybe it's something that is expected to see exponential growth over an extended period of time, whatever the case may be. That's what I believe the quote is all about. That's my interpretation of it. And I'm very curious, everyone watching this video right now, what is your interpretation? And has your interpretation changed as time went by? Did you see it the way I saw it originally? It's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep, AKA, hoard as much cash as possible. I was incorrect, but I was a rookie. Didn't really know what I was doing back then. Then I started to understand how businesses worked. I started to understand business expansion. I started to understand that the tax code was designed to build businesses and to invest and to scale, and to employ people, and to put roofs over people's heads, and to help people in a way on a large scale that the 99% are just unable to do. And then, as even more time went by, I realized that when they say it's about how much you keep, what they're saying is that it's about how much value you're packing into potentially stocks, potentially real estate, potentially businesses, and potentially precious metals. And if anybody's interested in joining the Precious Metals VIP Club, it's where I can do things on my own terms, not on YouTube's terms, my terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller and easier to manage. I'm posting exclusive VIP-only adventure vlogs. I also do giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes, shout-outs, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites. And of course, you can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. Come join the Precious Metals VIP Club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to hit that subscribe button like a Karen hits a bus window. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content bunch of brand new videos over there 
I posted one about China banning cryptocurrency, one about AT&T cutting its dividend, other videos about real estate, videos about silver, videos about gold, and a bunch of others. Go check them out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 3,000 subscribers. We just hit 2,000, and I appreciate that. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products. T-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, such as the recently released Kraken Stackin' T-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug, inspired by the beautiful two-ounce silver Kraken coin, which, by the way, is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations at no additional cost to you. It comes out of my pocket, not yours. And, of course, last but not least, the brand new DYDSS Karen Free Zone t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug. My name is not Karen. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again. What are your thoughts on everything shared in today's video? What are your thoughts on the world famous quote? It's not about how much you make. It's about how much you keep. Do you try to take a specific amount of your income? A specific amount of of what you make and put it into something so that you can keep it. Do you pay yourself in that way? Do you store value in that way? Are you taking your fiat, your currency, your glorified IOU debt note dying dollar bills that are depreciating in value and packing them into something to store value, to store and preserve wealth potentially stocks, potentially real estate, potentially businesses, potentially precious metals. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.